In this video, we are discussing a very important concept that is the life cycle of a thread. We shall explain this concept with one diagram. So here is the diagram we are getting. Here we are finding that we are having certain states are there. There is a new, runnable, waiting, timed waiting, terminated and blocked. This terminated state can also be called as a dead state. So whenever a new thread will be originated, then it will be found in the new state also known as the born state. Now when the thread will start its execution, then it will be found in this runnable state. And in this runnable state, the thread is supposed to perform its task. That is the intended task to be performed, which will be executed when the thread will be found in the runnable state. When the thread will be found in the runnable state, the thread may get suspended due to the presence of some higher priority thread in the system. So it will be found in the waiting state through this wait. And when that respective constraint will be waived, then through notify or notify all, that state transition will take place for the thread from moving from this waiting state to this runnable state. Sometimes this waiting may be for a certain duration only. In that case, the thread will be found in the timed waiting and then there is a wait or slip. So using this, the thread will have the timed waiting. That means the thread will not be waiting at this particular state for indefinite period of time, but it will be waiting here for certain duration only. So when the interval expires through notify or notify all this timed waiting state to this runnable, runnable state, the state transition will take place. And when the state, when this runnable state, when the thread will be found and after its completion of its task, then the task completes will take place and it will be found in the terminated state or the dead state and the thread will be, will be expiring here. Now, due to some IO request, a thread might be found in the block state or enter synchronized statement, the thread might, might be found in the block state. And when this, this acquired lock interrupt or when the IO completion will be obtained, then the thread will be found in the runnable state back again. So let us go for this respective states into more declaration and with a more definition in the next slide. What is the life cycle of a thread? A thread goes through various stages in its life cycle. The different states are new, runnable, running, waiting and terminated. At first we are discussing this new. A new thread begins its life cycle in the new state and it remains in this state until the program starts the thread and it is also referred to as the born thread. Next one is the runnable. So after a newly born thread is started, the thread becomes runnable and the thread in this state is considered to be executing the respective task what was supposed to get executed by this thread. So in the runnable state actually the thread is executing its own task. Next one we are having this waiting. Sometimes a thread transitions to the waiting state while the thread waits for another thread to perform a certain task. So some higher priority thread may come into the system. So this particular thread may be found having a transition from the runnable state to the waiting state. A thread transitions back to the runnable state only when another thread signals the waiting thread to continue its execution. Next one is the timed waiting. A runnable thread can enter the time waiting state for a specified interval of time. A thread in this state transitions back to the runnable state when that time interval expires or when the event it is waiting for occurs. So whenever the time will expire or the event for which it is waiting, when it will occur, then it will go back to the runnable state back again from the timed waiting state. Next one is the terminated also known as the dead state. A runnable thread enters the terminated state when it completes its task or otherwise terminates. So that is a terminated state or dead state. So we have explained all this concept using the diagram also. Now we are discussing priorities of a thread. Every Java thread has a priority that helps the operating system determine the order in which 
the threads are scheduled. That means the higher priority thread should execute at first compared to the low, lower priority the threads. So that means the priority will play a very vital role in the synchronization that is in the ordering of the thread execution. Java thread priorities are in the range between min priority that is a constant of 1 and a max priority that is a constant of 10. So the priority of a thread will be ranging from min priority 1 and max priority 10. By default every thread is given priority that is a norm priority and its constant of 5. Whenever we define one thread without mentioning any priority number then the thread will be found getting generated with the norm priority and the value will be 5 there. Threads with higher priority are more important to a program and should be allotted the processor time and before the lower priority threads will get the access of the respective resource. So higher priority thread will always have the priority higher compared to the lower priority thread and these priorities will be decided by the priority number. I think now the concept is getting clear what is the life cycle of a thread and what are the different states are there and how the state transitions are taking place and priority of a thread. Thanks for watching this video.